So this video is actually not what I had in mind for the next upload. It was going to be a review about another super good movie since there's plenty that came out this year. But I decided to fall into temptation and join the rest of the crowd in a good old fashioned angry mob. I, I'm, I'm not late to this one, right? As soon as I put out the Prey one, everyone stopped caring about Prey. I'm not late again, right? I hate keeping up with the current thing. Well, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. Ecstasy conceited with no self-esteem She's a teenage dream if you hate yourself Bright dyed hair and obnoxious clothes Thinks communism is the way to go She's a whore, a whore, a dime a dozen Jezebel Lord, mind and SSR eyes A thousand yards there for all those guys That she fucked and sucked before you came along You took a minor conflict over who was to use the fax machine first, and you exploded that into physical violence. And for that, I applaud you. She-Hulk Attorney at Law is the best Marvel show in existence. Marvel Studios really hit out of the park with this series. Man babies, step aside. Disney is here to put you in your place. Full of action, heart, and tons of laughs, She-Hulk Attorney at Law is here to tackle the real issues, like misogyny and objectification. If you're a filthy chud who can't handle adult conversations, just go back to your Japanese mango, sweetie. Check it out now on Disney Plus and buy the merchandise. No better way to help fight systemic sexism than by giving a megacorp your money. Buy some of the She-Hulk branded makeup just to prove to the world that you are in fact living your best life, girl. Also, don't forget to take a selfie at the anti-homelessness She-Hulk bench, cause you're a modern woman, and you don't need to worry about the homeless. You're a queen and you deserve to be worshipped. When the fuck are those Jews over at Disney gonna give me my goddamn money? I'm gonna head over there with a fucking baseball bat if they screw me on this. I'll bury them in the fucking woods, I'm not even kidding. If I don't see a fucking check, they're fucking dead. You put my fucking money to sleep, you go get my money or I'll put your fucking brain to sleep. Yeah, all seriousness, She-Hulk is abysmal so far. Granted, it's only the first episode, but it's so bad that I felt like getting some thoughts down on why this is just... Garbage. So for those unaware, She-Hulk Attorney at Law is the Marvel Cinematic Universe adaptation to She-Hulk. It serves as both her origin story and full-fledged dedicated series, and Disney does in fact plan on ingratiating her into the larger MCU. The story follows the meek and insecure Jennifer Walters, a cousin of Bruce Banner who, after being exposed to his radioactive blood, transforms into her alter ego She-Hulk. With a new lease on life, Jennifer has to find a way to balance her responsibilities as a superhero with her blossoming career as an attorney. Wait, did I say meek and insecure? Sorry, I meant narcissistic and sociopathic. So, full disclosure, I actually really like She-Hulk as a character. She's a ton of fun, and it's a very popular and likable addition to the larger Marvel Universe. Granted, the Marvel Universe is such a massive clusterfuck mess that it's basically impossible to keep up with if you haven't since childhood. There's still good runs on She-Hulk to keep an eye on. The sensational She-Hulk run by John Byron is pretty much the most iconic, since there's a lot of famous moments there and it really defines She-Hulk as a fun-loving, light-hearted character. To put it simply, she's supposed to be the mirror opposite to Bruce Banner. Bruce is tortured by the Hulk, and most of his stories are trying to find a way to control it or 
flat out die. And there's a lot of moments where Bruce loses his loved ones and feels like there's nothing left to live for. She-Hulk represents the other side of the coin. While she had trouble in the beginning, Jennifer is able to master her abilities to the point that she actually prefers her life as She-Hulk and views it as a chance to be seen as strong and beautiful. Hell, Jennifer ends up becoming a major advocate for superheroes along with Daredevil and helps represent the best case scenario of someone suddenly gaining special abilities. She's also very sexually promiscuous and has fucked every single thing that moves, but that's such a vulgar way to put it. Let's just say that Jennifer is very friendly to the male characters in the Marvel Universe and I think a girl or two, I can't really remember. But to bring things back into focus, it was only a matter of time before Marvel decided to adapt the character to live action. She's had a few cameos in the cartoons and has played major roles in some of the animated movies, but this is the first major appearance of She-Hulk and her debut into the MCU. Now, I've pretty much treated Marvel media post Infinity War, and if I'm being perfectly honest, I was getting spotty even before that, like my Steam backlog. Eyes glazed over and zero interest in half the shit there. Only thing I was really loyal to was the Netflix stuff, which even then, it was mainly just Daredevil, Season 1 of Luke Cage, and Punisher Season 1. Now that that's dead and buried, there's literally nothing worth keeping an eye on. Jessica Jones was good for a season, and Defenders wasn't really that great, and fucking nobody on planet Earth gave two fists of a fuck about Iron Fist. Now that that's all dead and buried, though, there's literally nothing worth keeping an eye on. The Disney Plus stuff looks so mad that it's basically impossible to work up the motivation to check it out. And the last MCU movie I dropped money on to see was No Way Home, simply because I had friends that wanted to see it. Marvel burnout set in so bad, and it's funny to see how the MCU is running smack dab into the exact problem that's plaguing the comics right now. Too much material that's rapidly sinking in quality. Audiences feel outpaced by all the Marvel shit coming out, which is all canon to each other, and each project coming out just isn't as good as what came before, so you basically have to do homework to keep up with the releases. A character in Phase 1 might be radically different come the new movie, if not just fucking dead, and you will be expected to watch the miniseries Netflix show Disney Plus exclusive movie to understand what happened, or it could happen in a movie that involves characters you hate. It's a mess. And another thing starting to drive people insane is the Marvel style. Every project, beyond the few exceptions, look and feel the exact same. Very bright, very colorful, and a heavy emphasis on humor. Some might even say too much humor. Now granted, it does make sense for these stories to be lighthearted and fun. They're superhero stuff. If you take it too far and try to be serious, you can end up looking like a massive jackass. The problem is, the Marvel style has long since outstayed its welcome. And it's funny when you really look back on a lot of those Phase 1 movies and see how few really resemble the modern MCU movie. Iron Man 1 got pretty goddamn grim. I mean, Tony was kidnapped by terrorists. What's going on? Also, Incredible Hulk. Large chunks of the first act to Incredible Hulk feel like a goddamn horror movie. The first Thor movie wanted to be almost like a Shakespearean tragedy, where they outright got Anthony Hopkins to play Odin. Even the first Captain America. They were all very straightforward movies, with only brief moments of cracking a joke. It really wasn't until Guardians of the Galaxy or Avengers Age of Ultron, where the Marvel style really started to rear its ugly head, of intentionally subverting characters for jokes, or adding in jokes every scene. Something that can outright ruin iconic moments from the comics. Sometimes that's even the joke of the scene. Haha, ha, it wasn't that thing you really cared about. I still remember Thor Ragnarok, you fuck. Give me my goddamn Planet Hulk movie. Point is, Marvel's gotten so wild and out of control that I just have zero desire to keep watching. I want my self-contained story, with characters I like, that feel like a solid three-act structure. Hell, all the contract mergers and licensing issues turn this into an even bigger mess if you're a fan of stuff like X-Men or Fantastic Four. This is shit that makes me not want to read the comics already, so stop putting it in the movies. But let's forget all of this and look at She-Hulk as its own thing. Even though you are going to need to know who this version of Bruce Banner is and know the events of Infinity War and Endgame, since he can fully control the Hulk and stay sane, this is all you need to know. I fucking hate this. Anyway, this version of She-Hulk is a tad different from her comic book counterpart. You see, Jennifer in the comics before becoming She-Hulk was a very timid woman. She was a very plain Jane, thinking she wasn't beautiful compared to others, and was nervous in her career as an attorney. It was only through her transformation did she realize her self-worth and become a confident woman, someone who doesn't take shit and looks out for the people she cares about. Well, this She-Hulk is... more petty? and vindictive and is sort of a massive cunt. Okay, so this is a territory that is well fucking tread, but here we are. The people in charge of the new She-Hulk show are very obviously politically motivated. Yeah, politics in a show about a lawyer who turns into an 8-foot-tall dummy mommy and fights bad guys. Now, to pretend that girl power stuff has never been in She-Hulk is 
just being dishonest, it's been a major part of her character pretty much since her inception. But the problem is that the show's version of addressing things like sexism is to be as childish and tone-deaf as humanly possible. You see, while a movie like Prey isn't exactly what I would call woke, I just did a whole video on it recently by the way, She-Hulk absolutely is. It has full-fledged rants by Jennifer that screams of being the writer shoving their hand up her ass and using her as a puppet to spout out political opinions. That rant in the beginning of the video has quickly gained infamy for being out of place, out of character, and all around just being insulting to the audience's intelligence. With this young, upper-middle-class woman talking down to a man with severe mental illness and PTSD, as though her problems are on equal ground with his, if anything, she's implying it's a little bit worse, I don't know what her problem is. It's not our fault she was born the worst gender. <laughs> Women. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, this is exactly what she is doing. The Sheila accounts defending this by screaming, it's not a contest, she's not saying she had it worse than Bruce, seem to miss the part where Jennifer turns into She-Hulk at will, just to flex how much more in control over her power than Bruce is. Let's actually talk about this for a bit, just to really bring this home. Now, I am fine with adaptations of comic stuff shifting details if there's something like Marvel, where there's so many different story arcs and runs on the characters that it's impossible to really define a clear beginning, middle, or end, and you need to get to the parts that matter to sell the audience audience on the character. With how much material is out there, it's basically impossible to remain 100% loyal. You're going to step on someone's toes. This especially applies if you need to plan long term, like a whole last movie franchise, and you need to set up character arcs that can work with other franchises and cross over without much issue. Reminder that the comics have had so many different reboots and retcons that everything you like will be rendered non-canon or meaningless with enough time, but here's the timeline of events for She-Hulk and Bruce Banner that would apply to the most famous parts of the comics. As as far as the general public cares and is aware of. So, Bruce Banner has been hunted by the military, lost the woman he loves, was forced into becoming a gladiator on a different planet, witnessed genocide, and was powerless to stop it, and straight up attempted suicide. This is just what's canon to the MCU. He unintentionally infects Jennifer with the same mutation and is worried he ruined her life, damning her to live the same life as him. But she actually loves the change, able to control it and wield it to her advantage, even being thankful to Bruce and assuring him that he didn't mess up her life. And the comic, Jennifer is really close to Bruce because they grew up together, Bruce even having to take shelter at their home when they were children to escape his abusive father. Bruce is filled with self-hatred and guilt, and Jennifer is supposed to be the last person he has left to really lean on, and understand what he is going through. Now, the MCU to date has never addressed Banner's childhood. It's only ever focused on his career as a scientist and his adulthood. Now, the Edward Norton film is canon, and while the deleted scene of his suicide attempt is still a deleted scene, the first Avengers film does make it clear that that Banner did attempt suicide at some point. The cell was just in, in case you needed to kill me, but you can't. I know, I tried. I got low. I didn't see an end, so I put a bullet in my mouth and the other guy spit it out. Now, with She-Hulk taking place after Endgame, you see Bruce is in full control of his transformation and is trying to act as the wise mentor to Jennifer. That's what he's attempting to do. That wording matters. Well, another change in the show from the comic is the actual way Jennifer is contaminated. In the actual comic run, she gets into a car accident and receives an emergency transfusion of blood by Bruce to save her life. While in the show, they're in the car together when the accident happens and his blood gets into her wounds. So it's unintentional instead of desperate times calls for desperate measures. He feels responsible over what happened to her and wants to guide Jennifer on how to control the Hulk so she doesn't become a target by the rest of the world and she can use her abilities for good. Dude has a lot of experience in this matter and wants to make sure his loved one gets the best advice possible. Well, instead of being a caring and supportive member of the family, Jennifer has a different relationship with Bruce in this. I don't think you have thought through how dangerous this level of power is. Do you know the damage you can cause? I mean, one mistake, one freak out is literally life or death. Okay, I'll be careful. Yeah, she's a massive bitch. Literally. They decided to make the connection between her and Bruce way more rocky and unstable than in the comic. And I think it's actually kind of unintentional. Just with her random political rants and her insecurity, which I will explain later, it seems as if she actively hates Bruce. And it's really weird. She just seems to constantly need to belittle him or one-up him on anything he says. Dude basically goes, 
hey, be careful of the Hulk. It's really dangerous, and your life could fall apart. And she's like, um, actually, I already mastered the Hulk. You clearly never lived as a rich white woman in New York. You don't understand my struggle. A guy talked down to me about the law. That's their relationship, and people actually think this is good. Don't you love it when the protagonist delegitimizes any chance at conflict for the sake of forcing in much more annoying conflicts? Like, instead of showing Jennifer actually struggled to keep the Hulk under control, keeping her emotions in check while she's a fucking defense attorney, and you see the impact that such a violent monster could have on someone who tries to live her life by the law, instead of all that, Jennifer can just control the Hulk because a woman's everyday struggle is just that bad. That's retarded. I do not care about the excuse, that is retarded. It really tries to say that being an upper middle class lady in modern day America is that bad that you can control an entity that embodies rage, as though inconveniences and annoyances that every single person on Earth experiences are A, exclusive to her and her gender, and B, can compare to the nightmarish shit Bruce had to deal with. The guy was an enemy of the state for years before he even met the Avengers, which even then, he was treated as the mad dog they could just barely control. It was a legitimate risk the Hulk would go on a rampage and fuck up every side, not just the bad guys. Hell, the only reason Jennifer in the comics could control it faster than Bruce is that she was exposed to his blood and not the pure gamma radiation like him. Plus, if I remember right, she got a serum from Morbius that let her change back and forth at will. That's to the best of my knowledge, it's been a while since I've read it. Jennifer in the comics is well aware that she lucked out on the deal, and she holds a lot of sympathy and respect for Bruce and what he has to struggle with. The idea that some guy's catcalling you is as bad as Bruce's shit, or worse, thinking speaking up at work can have you murdered, will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lois, this is not my Batman glass. He's just delusional and narcissistic as fuck. This Jennifer comes across like an insecure man-child, someone who is desperate to prove how much better she is than anyone, someone who thinks society itself is trying to hold her down, when it could very easily be described as people not wanting to deal with her bullshit. Hell, in this scene where she tries to prove how good she is at anger control, she fails to understand what Bruce was actually talking about. Controlling your emotions is more than just not getting angry. It's living like a monk and letting everything slide off like water on a duck, to try to stay still at provocation and not allow yourself to be swept up in emotion. Jennifer is actively swept up in her emotions as she tries to prove how in control she really is. Once again, you want to talk about how mature and in the know you are while sounding like a child with no clue how the world works. Even if there are roaming rape gangs trying to attack women outside cowboy bars, that's still not as grueling as like, say, going to war away from your family and developing PTSD. Oh, it didn't save, it didn't save him. He was your friend? <laughs> no. No, he was not. This movie is really good, by the way. Check it out. It's fucking amazing. You know, when you watch the news on TV, you see bad guys doing bad things to good people like you and Mommy. It's my job to take care of the bad guys to find them and to kill them, sweetie. The reason I harp on this so bad is twofold. One, it's hilarious seeing how out of touch this interpretation of She-Hulk really is. She's supposed to be the girl power icon after Brie Larson's Captain Marvel blew up in their face, and this one also went up like a wet fart in church for the exact same reason. People do not want these arrogant, self-absorbed, heroes, ones that rant on and on about societal issues they never actually have to deal with for the sake of getting a viral clip on Twitter. It's insulting, especially if you've actually dealt with fucked up shit in your life. And two, this is pretty much all we got for the show. The writer did an interview where they fully admitted that the first episode was rewritten because they, and I quote, couldn't write compelling courtroom scenes. A show about a fucking lawyer, something they remind you constantly of as Jennifer brags about how well versed in the law she is, and they can't make a good courtroom scene. Marvel is a multi-billion dollar entity, but it can't hire some script advisors. Half the goddamn company is lawyers. All that money must have went to the anti-homeless bench, or the Tinder account. This isn't a joke. And there's just such a funny irony in how hard the show wants to tell you how great of a lawyer Jennifer is. She's an expert in the law. She's got degrees. There's a Ruth Bader Ginsburg bobblehead in her office, you know? She cares about the law and the current thing. But the writers openly admit they know nothing about legal dramas or how to make court proceedings with fucking superheroes interesting. Another point I really think could factor in here on why the show feels so out of touch is something that really just kind of is a constant problem in woke writing. I know that sounds like such a cringe term. Oh, woke, 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 woke. Yeah, this actually is woke. You know, it's talking about how great women are, and it's 
fucking advertising on anti-homeless benches. I'm never gonna get over that fucking bench. But, here's the thing. Woke writing tends to treat every single character as a symbol to a larger group. Jennifer Walters is not Jennifer Walters, she represents the average woman. It doesn't matter that Jennifer's living a completely different life than, frankly, 99.99999999% of women on the planet. She's a lawyer in New York. When you really look at the world on a grand scale, that is such a small drop in the bucket. But woke writing makes her represent every woman ever. It's not that she herself has had her own experiences that affect her judgment, it's that she's supposed to be every woman fighting against society. And it's why she says, oh, I could be literally murdered if I speak up at my job. The problem is, audiences do not view characters as representatives of a group unless they're watching something that's explicitly metaphorical. This is a superhero show, it's not using metaphors. This is not Andrei Tarkovsky's stalker, okay? You are not seeing the debate between journalists and scientists and the average man over religion. So when Jennifer Walters, the character, talks as if she's experienced some horrific part of life that we've never seen her really deal with, it comes across as batshit insane. Hell, pretty much everyone that's seen that opening rant clip has said the exact same thing. Why is she not relating it to her job as an attorney? Why is she not saying, hey Bruce, I know what it's like to have to hold my emotions back because sometimes I have to defend somebody I know is guilty, but I don't have a choice in the matter because they have the right to legal representation like anyone else. You know, just saying, I mean... It's right there, it's that obvious. Better Call Saul just ended. You seriously couldn't rip off some of its ideas? I believe that until proven guilty, every man, woman, and child in this country is innocent. And that's why I fight for you, Albuquerque! Better Call Saul. But then you remember that the, uh... The writers admit they don't know how to write legal dramas. And this isn't even talking about how cheap the show looks. I mean, the CGI on She-Hulk is very hit and miss. Sometimes it looks fine, other times it just looks uncanny and very out of place. Now, I'm not super picky on CG stuff, mainly because I grew up watching Sci-Fi Channel and that had shows with some unspeakable CGI at points, but it's hard to really ignore how much worse She-Hulk looks compared to Bruce Banner, which brings up another point that the writers admit to. They openly stated that there won't be much She-Hulk in the show to save on the CGI. So they want to focus on the superhero stuff because writing a courtroom scene is hard, but they also don't want to have too much superhero stuff because that's hard. So in the end, who is this for? Blind consumers that just suck up everything with a Marvel brand? Well, I pirated this show thinking at the very least there'll be decent enough fat material, but the creators flat out admitted there won't be much big green lady. So this is just a waste of time. And it's not just the special effects that's lazy. The entire end of the first episode falls the fuck apart bad. A character by the name of Titania, who's a recurring villain in She-Hulk's Stuff, just bursting into the courtroom out of nowhere to do bad guy stuff. Basically, the whole episode is just about Jennifer's change and learning from Bruce, and out of nowhere, you get a bad guy to fight. It's so weird, because so far in the MCU, any and all presence of a superpowered person is a major deal, and the sudden blasé appearance of a chick with superpowers is very jarring. Maybe it'll be covered later in a different episode, but to not even address it or build her up whatsoever is clunky, which is made worse by the downright abominable editing. There's zero flow, things just cut around. Hell, this part right here, I swear to god, it feels like it was cut for a trailer and just left that way for the show. Who the hell are you? Jennifer Walters, attorney at law. You have the one-liner, and suddenly a desk is being chucked. It feels like there's a music stinger or something supposed to be there, like a This Summer text slam. All in all, episode 1 of She-Hulk already feels like a massive misstep, and this show is probably going to be mediocre at best. Hell, seeing how hard the journos and totally not paid chill accounts latched onto this to make it a massive shit show on Twitter is excruciating. That rant I showed you about the catcalling is spreading like wildfire, with corporal accounts treating it as an unironic callout that men need to hear, acting like some superhero show talking about sexism is a cultural milestone. I understand that people in Hollywood don't really seem to get the concept that you aren't supposed to rape women and children, but I assure you the rest of the country is well aware of this. Of course, this is a Disney product, the same company that claims any female characters they put in a movie is the first female to ever appear in media. Hell, even talking about this show is really giving it more attention than it deserves. I fully admit that videos like this and others are basically free outrage marketing. It's an ingrained tactic now by companies. Make a shit show as cheap as possible, overinflate the budget to hundreds of millions, mainly in the marketing department, blame all failures on haters while pocketing the difference, and write the whole thing as a loss like nothing ever happened. This is absolutely what companies like Disney and Netflix do when they want to scam their taxes a bit, since it's impossible to really prove, and it's really hard to punish as tax fraud without solid evidence. They can just say, production had issues are bad, and what could really be done? The executives get to make a shitload of cash, journals get to make click 
clickbait articles stoking up flames for internet arguments, and everyone is treated as puppets that prop up forgettable trash heaps. The consumers will fight tooth and nail to defend the honor of Disney, all while bellowing about how evil corporations and capitalism are, and the people who make bank off pissing on MCU Disney stuff get another few months worth of content. It's an ecosystem by this point, everyone feeding each other, and people who actually give a crap about good media and stories are left out to starve. But fuck it, there's plenty of other things to watch. Why waste time getting more angry about this than necessary? Really, the only fucked up part is when you look into how a lot of the FX people, you know, the people who do the CGI and things like that, that work for Marvel, constantly complain about being overworked and underpaid, which is, once again, insane for an entertainment company that's in the billions. But it does make sense when you remember that a lot of the money they put down as the budget is not really going where they say it's going. But fuck it. There's so many other things to enjoy and love, so there's no real reason to sell your soul to Disney just to get a mediocre product. Even if you're a regular guy that just wants to stick his schlong inside of She-Hulk's gamma hole, you can just read the comics. They're more fun, and don't feel like they're made by a bitchy ex-girlfriend who happened to get really political after you dumped her for being a psycho. Anyways, I rambled long enough. Time to forget this shit and look at some very artistic pieces of She-Hulk. I have terabytes of this stuff, and no, I am not deleting them. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Man, who wrote this shit? Oh, the lady who helped make Pickle Rick, that episode of Rick and Morty that's widely regarded to be one of the worst of the entire show. Now it all makes sense. I'm Pickle Rick! Fuck you! Hey loser, do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're gonna be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's gonna look at you funny. There's gonna be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're gonna plant crack in your house, and they're gonna arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.